Ah, well, it's that time of year again. The rain is getting warmer and uh, so is the wind, actually. So we think winter must be over and spring is on its way. We, we certainly, certainly hope, hope so. so. Ah, <laughs> oh, dear. So we think it's finally come to the time where we have to get the winter grime off the boat, don't we? We certainly do. We need to get that grot off the yacht and uh, we need to shed um, Salty Lassie's winter skin, don't we, Bev? Yeah. Uh, any boat, whether you're liverboard or it's just in the marina, it will build up grime simply because you're not using it. So we're going to start with one of the obvious ones, aren't we? Which is get rid of that bubble wrap. Which is get rid of that bubble wrap, which has actually worked as a very, very good double glazing for us over the winter. It has stopped condensation forming on the inside of the windows, and it's all we want. But now that the nighttime temperature rarely drops below about 7 or 8 Celsius, we don't think it's necessary. So we're going to risk it, aren't we? Oh, absolutely. I want to be able to see out my windows. So while we're cleaning uh, and getting rid of this, we're going to uh, salvage what we can, like the aluminium poles, but the bubble wrap, it just gets trashed. So as far as we're concerned, that's pure grot. And it was very cheap from Tesco. It's not too bad from Tesco at all. So. It's like £4 for 8 litres. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's just uh, something that um, just needs, but we will salvage, salvage what we can. The aluminium poles worked well, didn't they? They did, they did. They, they were much better than the ropes. But we do have ropes as well. Which are now filthy. Filthy, yeah. So now that we've got the bubble wrap off the windows and things like that, it's a great opportunity to get the boat a good clean. And while you're cleaning the boat, it's also another great opportunity to do a survey. Now, the reason I'm saying that is that when you're cleaning a car or something like that, you get up close to it, you're wiping all the suds off or putting wax on, and you get to see... Where did this little rust patch start to bubble up? Where did this crack come from? I don't remember that being like that because you're up close, you're paying a lot of attention. And while you're doing your boat, it's a good opportunity to do the same. So we're going to clean the boat from stem to stern and we're going to have a look at everything as we do it. We're going to be systematic. So we'll talk about that in a minute or two while we're doing it. So what I'm going to do now is take this horribly green line off. You can see, <laughs> if I put bits of the line beside it, <laughs> you can see the difference in colour. They're absolutely outrageous. Um, lines just go green over the winter. But I've got to take it through this double pulley. There's a, there's a, a stop here and a pulley here. And so I've got myself two mousing lines handy. And uh, I'm just going to take this bowling out. And then what I'm going to do is take my mousing lines and tie them to the bowling. Now they've got to go around these things, as you can see, it's it's like that. So it's just a case of, you can't joint them like that because they won't fit. You've got to joint them like that and just let the tape do it nice and gently. Um, otherwise it just doesn't go through. So I've got some nice thin whipping tape here. I'm just going to take it and just put that and just keep going. It doesn't have to be a perfect joint, you just have to make sure this does not come off before you're ready for it to come off. So, something like that ought to do. Give it a wee pull, seems good to me. Now it's probably not a bad idea to give it a wee twist to get it around the pulley, but here we go. This is either where we have great success or horrible failure. It's bending the whipping slightly, get a bit of a curve on it. Like so. Come on. And it's three. So we're good. That's that one done. And then I just repeat the procedure for the next one. 
and uh, to make sure that doesn't go anywhere I'm just going to put a little reef knot in it I don't want this leaving before I'm ready for it that's that one out of the way next one granny knot granny knot okay whatever Two, one, come on. Three, two, one, clap! I'm rubbish at the clapping, it has to be said, and rubbish. You seriously haven't got the clap, have you? <laughs> I haven't got the clap at all, but never mind. Uh, now, if we were wise, Beverly and I would actually uh, strip the boat at the beginning of uh, winter, and then we wouldn't have to clean all our lines like we do. But I have to tell you, it's a case of hope over reality. I always hope that Beverly and I can go sailing during the winter. But the reality is that we haven't been able to do so. So, um, yeah, a lot of people uh, take the sails off and strip the boat. But uh, this is the way we're doing it because I'm always hopeful that we can go sailing. So there's lots of different reasons that you survey a boat. Now, currently, this particular survey that Beverly and I are doing is because we're looking at the damage from winter. Um, you know, there's lots of times that the boat is offset to the wind. When you're at anchor, the boat will always point to the wind. But while you're in a marina, the boat can't move to the wind. So it means that lots of damage happen. Like we've already had damage on our solar panels. So we're taking this opportunity to look at damage on our boat. The other time that Beverly and I have done a survey is when we were actually buying uh, our boats. We actually did a little mini survey of every single boat we went on. We actually did our own little mini survey of every single boat we went on. And the reason we did that is if we could see a problem, then we were going to reject that boat. You know, why pay a surveyor to be told that the boat is no good? Find out what things that you can look at and uh, survey yourself. And that's why we surveyed our boats when we were looking at to buy. An example of the kind of thing that you can see when you actually are polishing your boat and really cleaning your boat well are these star cracks. Now they're not particularly uh, excessive here on Salty Lass but it's something, it's an example of something that you can see when you're getting up close and you're cleaning your boat. One easy thing you can check is your rigging. Um, some of it's easier to check than others. Down here at the bottom where it enters into the um swages it's fairly straightforward you can look for it you can look for cracks at the top of the swages um, another simple test we've been told is run your hand as far up as you can and if you feel a bulge inside this it means that a strand has gone inside your rigging and you need to replace that because sooner or later all the outside strands will go too you can also just lick up the rigging and look for any strands that have stuck out um, it's simple it's a simple thing to do and this sort of thing it's the sort of thing we did when we were buying Salty last and we were doing a survey on her. And the nice thing about doing this sort of survey yourself is if you find something wrong like this, there's no point in engaging a surveyor. You find something wrong with the boat. Why employ, why, like the gainer says, why employ somebody to tell you that he's found the same fault you did? Employ the surveyor when you find a boat that appears to be fault free and then get him to find the ones you couldn't find. That's a good use of money. So one of the things we'll do now is we'll have a quick squint up the rigging, look for anything obvious, see if there's any bends, twists through the rigging, see if there's any strands sticking out. It only takes a couple of minutes and they say that during the sailing season you should do it at least once a week, maybe once a month, but you should do it. So um, as Beverly and I are going around the boat in a systematic approach, uh, we're writing things down like um, look at this uh, bit of damage that I've got on my side panel. Uh, from winter wear really so I've got to write this down but because um, 
we're here for a bit longer, one of the things I'll also do is um, we'll look at the lines, take them off, because I've got to take it off to fix the panel, and maybe turn them round just like we did with the chain, um, just to put wear in different places. But, um, but yeah, you've just got to look at things, look at every single system from the heating to the wiring, everything really, and just write down what jobs need doing. I do use um, cable ties just to keep um, the ropes together so that they don't tangle. So I'm just unclipping them now. I've got a reef knot in. And then once I've done that, I just have to pull it through. I'm, uh, am I doing it the wrong way? Yes, I was doing it the wrong way, typical. But once you've done it, am I doing it? I'm doing it the wrong way, honest to God. This demo's falling apart quicker than your ropes. <laughs> it is. There, I've got it. No, I'm not. Yeah, you're right. My demo's falling apart, Bevy. Are you on the wrong end of the rope? You are, you're on the wrong end. I'm on the wrong end, honest to God. Try and do something and you're like, I want to film it. Pull it. No, don't pull it that way, pull it the other way, you dafty. That, that's it, that's it. What Whoa. were you thinking of? I have no idea. <laughs> but once you've got it going, it's fine. <laughs> but honest to God, trust me to get the wrong end. I've always get the wrong end of the stick, but there you go. There, got the thimble in. Oh. So what are you up to, Gamer? Well, I've just put the thimble in. Always the hardest part of this wee job. Sure. Positive. Okay. Okay. Pass me the end. Always keep me, keep me the end. Yeah, no, but do you know where the end is? Yes, it's over there somewhere. <laughs> doesn't it? It does. Another little issue we've come across, two little issues actually. Um, one is our um, life raft, a little emergency hook thing, our hydrostatic release, <laughs> had released. <laughs> but another problem with it is this is now out of date and also needs replaced. So that's another little thing we have to look for. Uh, while I've also been here we've noticed that uh, these seizings on the shackles are looking a bit crusty. They've been on there for quite a few years, so I think what I'll do when the weather's a bit better, because it's blown a bit of a hooli at the minute, is I'll cut these off and I will re-seize them. It's not a big job, it takes a couple of minutes for each one. And you know what? I think I'll just do every shackle on the boat, because these things under vibration can work loose. So one of my inspection items is to look at all these shackles as we're doing the boat, make sure that none of them are deformed or cracked, and see if any of these seizings have gone. I'm not happy with the seizings, I'm just going to change them all. So once you find problems, of course, <laughs> and it seems like an odd question to ask, should I fix it? Because the temptation is to say, no, it's not really that bad a problem, I can leave that for a bit, because if I decide to fix this, I'm going to miss out on some of the sailing season. Well, the truth is that if the problem is bad enough, you might get away with it and you might not. For example, say you found um, a couple of strands of rigging wire that were sticking out and you thought to yourself, well, if I try and fix this, I'm going to have to pay for a lift out, I'm going to have to pay for yard time, boat's going to be in for a bit, I might be a month or something like that, I'm going to lose part of the season, I might use all my holidays up and not get to go sailing. What I'll do instead is, I'll sail, I'll go carefully and not strain the rigging, and then the boat can go in the yard afterwards. You might get away with it, you might not. Uh, to fix the rigging will cost you money, to fix a broken mast will cost you a lot more money. It's a bit like what we said a couple of episodes ago about calling the RNLI, or any problem really. The earlier you fix it, the less it will cost you. So while going over your boat like this has the potential to completely ruin your sailing season, 
it won't ruin it as badly as if it goes really, really wrong and your boat winds up breaking and maybe breaking in some out of the way place. If you find something wrong with it here in your, in your local area, near your home marina, you will know where the mechanics are, you will know where the parts are and you will know people who can help you fix it. If you're in the Outer Hebrides, there mightn't be anybody near you for like 20 or 30 miles. What are you going to do? So, get your boat checked, go over everything, make sure everything's working, do a couple of test sails, don't come back and say, oh look, lovely sunny morning, let's hoist the sails up and go 100 miles, boom. Don't do it that way, take it out for a little test sail, just a weekend or two in advance, get your sea legs sorted out, get the boat sorted out, make sure that everything works, it's like the diesel heater, doesn't switch on, because if you get cold out there, you're going to want it. So, don't take the chance. Use this opportunity, this pre-season opportunity, to go over your boat, survey your boat, have a good look at it, try and find things that are wrong with it, try and get them fixed. And in that way, when the sealing season does come, you can go out and enjoy yourself knowing that everything on your boat is working well.